Hello, how are you all doing today? Thought I would uh, show you a couple things and then uh, try to show you what I can show you with LCDs. A um, bunch of different commands and fairly recently discovered thing on my part. Um, I have been working on this uh, combat CV some. Um, and I did, did take the advice on uh, some comments. I did remove the front thruster that was right in the middle. Um, I still might uh, do something more with this area, but uh, what I decided to do was to take and put a couple thrusters out on these extensions towards the uh, kind of mid mid section of the ship, mid rear area. Um, and I sort of was just kind of laying out some uh, blocks here to try to figure out how I want the overall shape to be. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to have it as long as it as it appears right now. Now I could easily chop the ship off and get the, the rear thrusters mounted like right in this area. It wasn't exactly what I was trying to go for when I was building that though. Um, sort of wanted a bit more of a battleship kind of look to it. Um, and I got this area ripped apart too. I had some strafing thrusters here and I could put them back in but I was just kind of uh, toying with the idea of not having strafing thrusters there and instead put some big ones back over here, just a couple, um, for decent turning. Basically what I'm trying to do, I'm in Reforged Eden right now, I've got all the, uh, the blocks and the warp core and the shield and generator and all that kind of fun stuff in the ship right now, and I was trying to weigh where the CPU is at, um, which is going to limit how many guns I can put on this. So if I can make it more efficient with thrusters and other things, that means I can get more guns on it, and since it's a gunship. Um, that's, that uh, seems very appropriate. Now currently, it, it, uh, it flies and moves around all right and all that stuff. It is a combat steel hull um, on the inside, which is just nothing right now. Um, uh, most of the front of the ship is just not going to be living space whatsoever. Um, I got a bunch of turrets installed in here and I'll seal around them and build in some like firewalls and things like that. I, I'm trying to go like with the Asteria and go with only a single lift thruster, which proportionally speaking, I don't like that because it doesn't, it looks like if you try to take off, the front of the ship would lift off and the back would crash, crash to the ground. Now I may change that yet. Um, but if I did, I would have to run a lot more lift thrusters uh, to keep a uh, uniform and even. And that is something I don't necessarily want to do because it's going to suck up more CPU um, doing that. The same reason why I originally wanted to have uh, like a single reversed uh, big thruster in here. Um, now I can put in big ones over here. I have enough CPU for that as well, but I just don't feel it needs two extra large thrusters for reverse um, and that, that has a way of shooting through CPU really quickly. And I was just kind of comparing it um, versus two other like uh, combat oriented uh, CVs I made in the past size wise. The Asteria being the uh, smaller of the two. Um, now both these other CVs also have hangers um, and this one I was like I don't really want it. I didn't really want to have a hanger but then I'm thinking Man, um, I could easily have extra room for a hanger. It won't be a big hanger. Um, uh, won't be terribly wide because the whole ship is narrower than even what the Asteria is. Um, but I just keep on thinking if I got rid of the functionality of a hanger, that would kind of suck too. Um, if you're going to use this as your main ship in game, it's kind of expensive not to use as your main ship in game. Um... So I've been weighing a lot of options and things like that. Um, uh, so other things. I didn't do anything more with this one right now. I'm still kind of sitting on it, thinking on what, what I want to do with it, um, how I want it to be. <laughs> I was uh, randomly toying around with a uh, tiny little uh, Star Trek-inspired ship. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep on going with this or not. Um, I guess it... Uh, the way I did the uh, the saucer part of it, it kind of probably looks a little like a Star Trek Voyager. Um, I did the. I wasn't trying to go necessarily for that look, but I was trying to come up with the angle in which you couldn't tell as badly 
that it's made of voxels because the Star Trek ships are quite roundish and you just can't simulate that very well with blocks. Um, so I was just trying some ideas and and also too on scaling um, this ship is dinky compared to any of the actual like Enterprise class ships out there. Um, I think what is this thing running like uh, 92 meters long. I think the smallest Star Trek ship is around 240 some meters long. So this is a, a baby little ship. Um, now on something else before I get to the LCDs, which I'm I'm working my way there. Um, I started messing around with something. Now Pear Pear gave me a heads up on this yesterday that in the uh, Reforge Eden uh, community server. Uh, or the Anvil uh, Reforged Eden community server, there's going to be uh, like a little side thing where you can like make a 15 by 15 um, block size uh, building and they'll be kind of like laid out and put in place to make like a, a, uh, a city on a planet that will get added to the game by the admin um, or admins on there. So... Uh, I thought, oh yeah, that sounds fun. So I started building something already for that. Um, and my intent of this would be, I think it would be called uh, Club Anvil. <laughs> and it's basically just a uh, kind of a modern looking building that I would have to like kind of decorate and make it club-like. And then I'm kind of working out the, uh, the details on this, but uh, it's gonna have a big A on the side for, for Anvil, you see, so. Um, now I'm uh, I was gonna I was gonna change this around a little bit more. In fact, I, I wanted the A a little bigger, and I had it kind of like set up for there. But then I, I ran out of block space because this this is the uh, biggest biggest area I can build out to with this uh, structure. So I had to kind of like chop it right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yep, fun stuff. Um, <clears throat> it was fun building this building too. Basically, everything I was trying to do is build everything pretty much on some kind of angle. Um, using a lot of angle blocks, but actually uh, no curvy blocks, um, just to see uh, if I could make some kind of weird shaped thing. And it's like different different angles. Like here's a uh, here here would be like a, a flat face, and then a 45, and then this over here is a 22.5, and it just kind of like goes around that way. Um, all right. Well, anyway, I got a couple ships here too. Uh, to show you some uh, LCD technologies, and I got a little display thing over here set up to uh, build a couple LCDs. Um, to start with, I was going to take a look at uh, one of Crazy Z's uh, new ships that has an awful lot of LCDs in it. Uh, this is uh, obviously right there, the uh, Asriel. Um, and typical uh, uh, Crazy Z luxury in here. Um, this thing's got it all. It, uh, here, I'll, I'll even, I'll, I'll switch over to mood lighting here, too. I gotta, gotta see these things with mood lighting. So, um, what's possible with LCDs is an awful lot of stuff. If you take a look at this whole display screen, um, and what's going on here, it's, um, it's pretty amazing what you can do with LCDs. But learning how to do that and putting the time in to do it can take a long time, too. So, uh, a lot of respect for uh, authors that uh, go, go through this kind of uh, uh, insane detailing and things like that to create these LCDs like this. I mean, if you just take a look at all the, the intricate details on this, it's, it's, it's quite fantastic, really. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you can do this in the game, too. I mean, it really gives you uh, just a huge amount of options. But uh, you'll see LCDs everywhere throughout this. I mean, keypads and stuff over the parts. And, uh, yeah, um, just one thing after another. And check, and this, even this piano, this is, uh, this is an LCD. I was kind of, like, studying this to try to figure out... Uh, how it was actually done and it looks like he actually used um, some older school non-projection style LCDs to make this happen and that's that's slick too I mean 
it's just yeah there's just a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on um, logos and stuff over the parts and intercom LCDs and cooking range LCDs and you name it oh, coffee oh look at that I mean look I, I mean tell me that's not cool I mean this is this is even like 3d over here I mean so you could do just an amazing amount of stuff with LCDs of course you're gonna have to put a lot of LCDs in your ship um, I have a problem with that on a lot of my ships where I just don't leave room to add in these LCDs and I don't necessarily like having them visible but I find myself to not having much choices in the in the matter now another ship that uh, had an awful lot of LCDs and this is by NMK 111 this is the MCR and interceptor um, I've, sh I've looked at this one before and I think uh, Excalibur also looked at this one before uh, really uh, amazing beautiful ship inside and out um, takes advantage of an awful lot of LCDs as well um, I mean when you look in here and you just look at the amount of uh, detail on, on so many of them um, and this and, and actually yeah he's he's got a lot of other things with LCDs too and the switchable type and everything like that and, uh, like like this over here uh, it's it, it is it is really cool now recently I just kind of figured out how to do a little bit more of this um, I haven't really put it to practice much yet um, in the final uh, here, let me give this ship fuel um, in the final version of the ship that I released to the workshop I did um, play over here making this different thing over here for uh, LCDs it's I can't say it's like uh, anything special but the simple fact is I learned how to properly position things um, and especially there was a lot of positioning done with the uh, the lines up at the top where I got these to actually join and make a, a, a box around letters and this is all done with one LCD that's actually kind of hidden right behind over here um, so that's kind of what I've learned now in practice here uh, let's get to that uh, there it is my little display over here so just a blank wall right now all right so LCDs um, so I'm gonna get into here and typically at this point in time I, I use this stuff but I typically do not mess with the color the background color or the font size um, when I'm doing LCDs you can do all of this with codes that you put in the LCD itself so if you're familiar with LCDs enough obviously you can you can place one you can put in whatever uh, and then you can uh, you see where that is right now and then you can use these to move it around um, like say I wanted it over to the side and I want to set it up or down you have a lot of different controls to do this as well as rotating it like if I wanted to bring this forward a little bit and then we'll say a Y rotation 45 degrees say so now we've got this LCD kind of on the side like that um, amazing LCD there uh, a lot of work in this one <laughs> okay but as in the commands here um, commands would include things to change between bold metallic color size uh, horizontal position and then uh, something that was escaping me for a while and that is line height so I'm gonna try to go over all this stuff um, to start with uh, let's let's start with color so color uh, basically you're using these uh, the less than or greater than symbols and you cannot use uppercase letters in your command words like color if I put a capital C here it doesn't work I, I learned that the hard way early on so color equals um, and then what you have to do when setting your colors you have to put in a number sign and then what you've got going on here is hexadecimal now there's six characters of hexadecimal and that is from zero to F um, so essentially if you're not familiar with with hexadecimal like a would equal 11 I believe I hope I got that right or 10 <laughs> anyway it's basically it's 0 through 16 so if I were to put in let's say I wanted this to be red how, how it's laid out is you have red green and blue 
the first two characters are red, the second two characters are green, the third two characters are blue. So if I wanted to say red, and we'll go with a fairly high intensity red, so the highest intensity would be Fs. Um, follow, and then if a little bit lower intensity would be E's, um, so on and so forth. And actually I would recommend trying to find more specific colors. Now I'm just gonna make up colors as I go here, but if you go online and look at a color picker, it'll actually give you the hexadecimal numbers of the color you pick. Just, just be aware that if you find a really cool color and you pick it from like a color palette and you get the hexadecimal code, when you put it into the game, more than likely it will not look like the color that you've seen on, on the color palette when you selected it. A lot of times it distorts them and I think it has to do with lowering the colors down from probably 16.8 million colors, which is pretty standard, down to, I'm guessing, around 256 colors. Um, so if you pick like a certain shade of red, it'd probably be brighter or darker than what you think it should be or even tinted differently. So if I go red uh, or FF0000 and close this, now um, here, here, let me uh, straighten this out. Now you can see that my text is in fact in red. We'll move this back in front. Now here's something else too that was really bothering me um, for a while and it made LCDs really difficult. When you're working on an LCD, often the, your sensor is somewhere completely away from where your LCD is. Um, now currently it's not necessarily, but like if I just wanted to keep on working on this LCD and say the sensor was buried behind the wall, but I want to see what's going on, it, the game itself remembers the last one of these you touched on, providing you didn't touch on another one. So like if I, if I hit P to look at this LCD and then hit access, um, I see this, but now if I'm just blankly staring at a block and don't have like a constructor or a part or anything in my path, I can hit P again without looking at the LCD and it will remember the last thing you had selected so therefore I can edit this again um, and do whatever I want with it. Okay, so we added in color, no big deal at all, but let's say we wanted to change the color again. So let's, uh, right after the word testing, we'll do another color, we'll say it equals, I don't know, let's say this one's going to be blue. So uh, zero, 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 and then FF for straight blue. Saying so now we've got testing one, two, three, two different colors. Now I'll just hit P again without looking at anything else. And let's say we wanted to make this italic. I could add in another command here and italic is just open and then I. So now the one, two, three is an italic. So let's, uh, let's also change the size. Size is pretty straightforward. So size equals, let's say we want this to be 40. Um, so now we've got testing one, two, three, um, just like that. Now, here's where, those are, uh, all this so far is pretty straightforward. Um, and then you also have a B, which is bold. So now we can do letters in italic and bold. Also, too, like if, if like I set this to bold and italic and say we wanted to add in uh, four, five, six over here, and I don't want this in italic anymore or bold, what you have to do is you have to end these. So I will do an open, I will do a slash I, which turns off italic. Um, and I'll do the same thing for bold. Um, open slash B and now I got rid of the bold um, so that's <clears throat> whoops so that's that's one test now a side effect though when you start doing this sometimes uh, and I'm sure you'll probably run into it I haven't yet where when I'm touching here I'll, my cursor lines up to the appropriate letter but uh, a lot of times it will not and that's where you need to actually copy this out of the game into a text editor to properly align it or try to figure out exactly where you are. I'll, I'll see if that occurs when I'm doing some more parts of this here. So also what I'm going to do too is you have a width and height command here. Like right now this line at size 40 it's not fitting the 4, 5, 6 on the same line. So what I would do is increase the width until it does fit across. And you can go up to 5 on this 
So you can make some pretty big signs. Um, and we'll slide this over a little bit here too. So, all right, so next, next set of uh, commands here. Let's say we go down a little bit and let's do something different. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is let's set a new size. We'll say size equals 50. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna pick a symbol. Uh, so insert font symbol button here. And let's find something. How about I'm just kind of looking for like a square box kind of thing. So, okay, so we now we got a square box. Now, if you notice, the square box is like even here, I'll get rid of that space there. The square box is here. And what, what I had a problem with before is I had no idea how to move the square box up. Like, say I wanted the square box around the testing word. How would I do that? Well, this is where it gets a little tricky. At the end of this line, what you have to do is put in another command called line dash height. And then you uh, then we'll set it to a number. Um, and now this can be a positive number or a negative number. So let's say we'll say line height equals minus 10. And I'll close that. So now, as you can see, that square box raised way up. Um, so now, but I have this, I have this uh, variable here that I can adjust it. So let's say rather than minus 10, it equals 10. And let's say it equals 15. And now I realize that the box isn't quite big enough to fit around my word testing. So let's, uh, let's make the box a little bit bigger. Let's say we're at, uh, I don't know, let's try 70. All right. Now, something else that you can do, too. Now the box needs to go over to the uh, left a little bit because now it's not quite fitting around that word. So what I could do here is add in yet another command, and that is position, or P-O-S. And I will say equals minus 10. Say so now, as you can see, that box went around the word testing better. And then if I uh, mess with this a little bit more and lower it down... We can uh, get it kind of around the word testing. But let's say I wanted to add something else over the top of what's already here. Um, so let's uh, let's go down to here. I'm going to just put in another line height command after this line as well. I found that you need to do this at the end of a statement. It's kind of weird, and that's what was really tripping me up for a long time. Um, so I'll just say line height equals zero, just to, just so it's there. Shouldn't change anything. I'll go down to the next line, and now the objective is I want to put something that maybe overlaps that box with a different color. Uh, let's try that. Let's see what happens. So we're going to do another box, um, but first I'm going to change the size again. Let's say size equals... Uh, a little bit smaller, I think. Uh, let's say size equals 68. Um, and then we will, uh, I'll just put in a position command again. We you know we'll have to adjust the numbers on that. I'll just say position equals zero, so it's in place. Um, let's change the color again. So color equals at, let's do a green this time. How about a darker green? So how about a, uh, a little bit muted? So we'll add in one one. Let's say we do uh, eight eight and one one. So it's kind of a weird shader. I didn't type anything yet, so you're not seeing it. And then let's add in another of that same box symbol. Okay, so now you can see that other box is right kind of to the side of where the one is. Now what I want to do is kind of overlap this box so you kind of see part of the blue on the outer edges. So now what I can do is adjust my uh, position over here and we'll give this a negative 10. Not quite it. Let's say neg uh, negative 9. And now here we'll get out of there. Now if you take a look at it that I got this blue line around the other box and uh, to take this a little further maybe we could add a symbol behind the word testing so here again I'm gonna put in a line height command 
whether or not I need it or not. Um, it's, uh, I just learned that it's really wise to do this, even if it equals nothing for right now. And then I'll go down to the next line. Now let's say we want to, uh, here, let's, let's again mess with the color. Color equals, let's go with the, uh, Let's go with a yellowish color. So let's uh, let's do like a E E C C zero zero. So okay, that should end up some form of yellow. I'm not exactly sure what yet. Um, and let's say we want to add in another color. Actually, I'm going to put in a position command again. Again, just equaling zero. And let's pop in some other symbol of some origin. How about this weird looking thing here? See, now a side effect that I've got, and I haven't quite figured this out, it probably has to do with the order that you put things in. But like, like the first box I put in is back over at this line here. And now I'm trying to put something that I actually want in the background of that first box. Um, so I kind of did that in reverse order. I probably should have put this in first and then the other stuff. But essentially, um, here, let's, uh, let's take this line out. I'm going to hit uh, Control X on the keyboard, which is cut. And then I'll go back beyond this, this line here, and I will hit Control V to paste that. And as you can see, now it changed the order where the green is uh, over, because it was the last one done, it is over the, the top of the yellow. Um, and yeah, I, I admit, it, this is, it looks like uh, absolute crap, but this is, uh, this is how it's done, actually. Um, and then when you start getting into it, you can get more and more complex. You can keep on adding things over the top of another you could put in like a large symbol and then some text over that. Um, keep on changing the color, keep on changing the size of everything. Add in lines and try to line those up properly. Um, and that, and uh, here, let me uh, just cruise over back over to this ship again. Take a look at the LC over here. Let me uh, see, I'll, I'll take advantage of that uh, thing. So I'm gonna hit P so I can look at this LCD. I make sure I hit access. Then I will back off, and while I'm looking at it, I'll hit P again, even though I'm not pointing at anything right now, and I still got access to the LCD. So to describe what's going on in this LCD, obviously it's set the size and the color over here. Then it's doing a symbol of the top line. Um, it's got the line height in there, and then what I'm doing is I'm putting in these uh, these side lines, and I'm positioning them up so they perfectly meet the corners. So it's actually, it does like, like this line, and then it does this line, and this line, and then with those adjustments, you can get them all set up so you can make like a perfect box out of these symbols. Now, it's something I was never able to do in the past, that's why I would never really have side lines on LCDs because I could not get them to line up properly. But now you can. So that's kind of what's going on with this one. And then I just went crazy. And since I figured out this line height thing, and notice how the, I got a line height after every single command. Um, if you try to put the line height at the start of the command, it doesn't seem to work at all. So, but now editing something like this, it's being weird. It's actually like working, which is really freaking me out. I'm not sure why I can actually touch on this stuff and change the numbers. I had such a hard time when I was first doing it. Um, maybe it has something to do with exiting out of the game and coming back in the game because it gets all like screwed up. Like if you wanted to like change some of these letters, say I wanted this to say, <coughs> oh, excuse me, say H-E, um, there, well, <laughs> I don't know if you guys ran across that yet, I continually do, in fact, it happened a lot when I was building this, this one too, but now it seems to be working, anyway, let's, uh, let's do one other LCD over here, get over to the, 
the little uh, LCD thingy here. Um, so let's try to make something a little more interesting this time. Let's try to do that box thing that that was done on the last one. And maybe uh, maybe even try to use a roundy symbol on it. So the first thing I want to do is uh, let's start with the box. Um, so what I'm going to go, I'm going to hop in here. I'm going to pick uh, like a line. Let's let's like pick this line over here. Oops. And I'll just kind of hit Control C on that to copy it, and I'll just paste it so we get a line. We'll just keep this one kind of small. All right. So what I want to do on this line here. Um, yeah, let's give it a color. Equals, we'll just have this one straight white. Oh, no, that's not white. Straight white would be all Fs. All right. And I'm going to give it a position, even though I'm not going to give it a number yet. And then once it's done doing that, I'm going to give it a line height. And I'm just going to keep that at zero as well. So all those position things didn't do anything yet. But if they're not there, it's a real pain in the butt to adjust them later, especially if you run into that text problem that I haven't yet been able to show you. Um, OK, so now what we want to do is we want to add uh, some other characters that kind of come down from this line to form like a box. And then we'll put a bottom line in. So let's see what characters we have in here. Uh, I was kind of looking for something that wasn't necessarily square. So how about how about we add in like this, like one of these roundy things? Okay. So obviously, right now the roundy thing looks too small and it's not in the right spot. So let's make this roundy thing bigger. Uh, now default size, I think it's seven right now because I never did set a size. So here, let me set one of set that to. Okay. Oops. Okay. Size equals, and we'll say this is going to be equal 10. Okay. So now eh, still not quite big enough, I think. So let's 12 getting pretty close. I'm trying to uh, make this line look at the same width as the line that's over here. 14. That's pretty close. Let's give it a couple more for good measure. All right. And now we want to, uh, I'm going to adjust this line height. And let's just say line height is 10. Let's see where that ends up at. Not quite good. Uh, 14, a little too much, 12, close, 12.5, can I do that? Oh yes, you can do 0.5s, cool. I didn't even actually know that, um, I should have probably, probably looked. And now, um, we're going to get rid of this first symbol here, and I'll space that out, actually, rather than space it out, you're much better off just using the big the uh, position command here. Say at four, five, close, six. Yeah, six is pretty good. See, you see how that lines up very nicely now. Um. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to add the opposite to the other side. So what I will do here is add in another position command. Don't know where it's going to be yet. I will give it a, just a random number. And then we'll put in the other symbol. And now we'll adjust this position out to something that fits. There, like that. Okay, and like all things else, um, do I got a space there? No. <laughs> there is no undo here, by the way, so just keep that in mind. If you, hit, uh, if you screw something up, it's, it's screwed up. You got to fix it. 
or if you uh, just make a copy of it by uh, if you hold if you hit Control A while your cursor is blinking somewhere on here, it'll select everything, and then you hit hit con Control C. Like if I totally screwed this up and couldn't seem to figure out how to fix it, I could just again get rid of the whole sign by highlighting it all, hit and hit and delete on the keyboard, and then hit Control V again and put it back in place. Kind of wise to do that. You can save yourself a lot of headaches if you uh, if you do that. All right, so let's continue this box. Next thing we want to do is add some characters that join up here. We'll make like kind of a roundy oval. And but before I do anything, I'm going to do another line height, and we'll just set it to zero. And then now we're on the next line. So the first thing we want to do is I'll just put in a uh, position equals zero. Um, and we'll put in a symbol like something that goes straight up and down there. So how about like this line here? All right. So now this is uh, not in the right spot and it looks too big. So what I'm going to do is get right in front of that, and we'll reduce the size. Say you're at 12. Probably it's still a little too big. Back to 10. Maybe even like 8. That's close. Okay, and then we will uh, up that position. Well, let's let's get the line height right. So line height equals 2 it down a little bit one okay now position that over a smidgen oops not size position yeah okay so we got that so now let's put in another position equals we'll just say 130 whatever the last one was and we'll put in uh, about the same symbol again and we'll space this out till it fits. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, so we got that in place. Uh, again, line height, oops, again. Line height equals zero, next line. So now we want to, uh, Reverse that. So let's put in uh, position equals zero, and then we'll give it the uh, the next curvy part. Um, all right. So the size on this needs to be the same size as the last curvy part, which was 16. And then we want to adjust this line height. And so it fits. Go to seven. That yeah, looks pretty good. A little hard to see. It's kind of right behind there. Let's put in a position command again. We'll just say, what was the first one? The first one was at 130. Let's try that again. And then pop in the last part of this. All right. Oh, except I uh, I don't have the line in here yet. Let's do that on the next line. Yeah, I think that'd make more sense if I did it on the next line. Um, okay. So again, line height. The next line, what we want to do again is we want to set our size to seven which was the same as the first line. Um, give it a position equal six. In fact, you know, I could have pretty much just copied this. In fact, I'm going to. Um, so I will copy all of this part of it, at least. Let's get rid of that, and we'll paste that here. All right, and then we adjust the line height from the previous line to some kind of negative number to make it go upward. And that's pretty close. Just trying to be, uh, 
try to get it right on the money if I can. Uh, that ain't doing much. <laughs> 1.5. Let's try that. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. That's why. Duh. Alright, so... It needs to go lower, not higher. So... 0.9? Ah, that looks pretty pretty much dead on. Alright, let's just take a look. So, what we managed to do is create a uh, solid ring that lines up. Now let's put something in the middle of that ring. So, again, let's do a line height equals... Ah, keyboards. <laughs> line height equals zero. And let's uh, let's mess with the color here. Color equals go with a red, I guess again. Um, how about a DD, and then a one 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 one. Oops, and I forgot the at symbol here. Okay, so and I'll just whoops feed in a position command. Just give it zero for now. Uh, let's change the size. Uh, say equals 14. Let's uh, say it's italic. And let's give it some text. All right. So now we've got this is a button. So what I'm going to do is use the uh, the position command here to get that centered properly. I need a little more than that. A little too much. Actually, right about ten looks like. Yeah, close enough for this. And then let's raise it up a little bit. So how about minus four? Here, that's three. All right, this is a button, and that's that. Essentially, is how LCDs are done um, uh, on the uh, on the complicated ones. Uh, there's a, a couple other tricks too. Now, something I didn't show that I haven't used. I believe there is a way to do a center uh, center command or maybe uh, I don't exactly know that uh, command off the top of my head but usually I guess so far I haven't really needed to because you can put in a number and go by I um, on your uh, spacing and how it's centered um, so that, that that is how you kind of go through and make the more complex LCDs and then basically the rest of it is taking those LCDs and messing with the uh, positioning of it to maybe put that over a part or an item like you've seen done in some of these creations over here. Um, and it can take a lot of time. I mean, you can you can mess with these LCDs for quite a while, but I mean, uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Obviously speaking, you could almost like make complete graphic displays that you would look like were made in Photoshop, sort of. Uh, you're not going to get the color variety or, you know, all the other stuff you could do pixel per pixel, but you can make some nice, obviously make some very nice looking things. So that is something I definitely wanted to show everyone, uh, at least kind of uh, where I'm at with LCDs. Now, I haven't really went to town trying to make pretty LCDs yet. Uh, I was just kind of more horseplay and messing around, so I know what I'm doing. Um, it's very frustrating when you don't know what it, what you're doing. Um, like um, again, that that line height command was the uh, the biggest stopping point I had. I understood all the other commands, but I could never seem to get things lined up vertically, which was really uh, causing me to make much more simplistic signs because of that. And once I re um, and, got, and Crazy Z gave me some uh, pointers on this too about the line height command at the end of the. Uh, the statement. I didn't quite understand it when he told me, and it took a while of trial and error to figure out what was actually happening and how I could understand it. And basically, by putting a line height command at the end of every statement, um, 
at that uh, that uh, and at the at the next statement if you have a position command you got your both your x and y you can position something at and once you can do that um yeah then you can set anything wherever you want it on your on your lcd display so that is pretty much the extent of it so uh yeah th that's about it for this video um I'm going to try to get some better reference on what's going on with the uh, this this uh, Anvil uh, community build thing. There's information about it in the help section on Excalibur's Discord, and it's by Pear. So if you want to take a look at that information, um, I got to figure out how to link that because um, I wouldn't mind linking it to the uh, the, the YouTube uh, video um, just so you know where it's at and all in the rules. But basically, in a nutshell. Um, even though I got to change this, I think I screwed this part up, but it has to be, uh, basically, uh, you have to have a concrete row of blocks that's, um, I believe, 15 by 15. Um, this will not be copied when it gets put into the world. Everything above it will be, and that's where I screwed up, is, is I didn't actually make a floor on this, uh, this building here. So I'll probably have to lower this down and make a floor for it so it can kind of sit there and basically since these are uh, the same size like tiles like a tile set really they could be positioned into the game world like right next to each other so um, essentially building a city and everybody builds like a building um, could be a lot of different stuff um, whatever whatever you want to make you know so um, some kind of building structure or something to add to the city could be something useful could be completely for looks like this is pretty much completely for for looks um and i believe that there was a size class restriction on it too and i don't know if that's going to stay that way or not um the size class restriction was size class one and i can i can actually get this structure to to work at size class one i'm only at 0.45 with what you see here but that is if it is all fake if i uh, if i go through and actually try to build an interior or something on this then there's no way i'm going to be at size class one now one concept here too what i've got is why i've got blocks that look like they're supposed to go where windows are is this is a uh, a cheap thing to do to simulate windows and they actually look better from a distance um quite frankly as an example of that let me uh yeah, I know I said I was going to be done with the video. Uh, always, always more to show. Um, so here, I'm going to spawn in one of these older city buildings, which were essentially fake buildings. Um, and I simulated the windows on here by using a marble texture. And then I uh, made a custom color, and I kind of painted that, that these colors. And uh, actually, let's take a look. What I actually used... Like, I actually got three different shades. I made these three different shades, which are kind of like a blue-gray, I guess you could say. Um, slightly different tones. And I painted, like, one one shade, another a little bit uh, different shade. And I did that to try to make it look like there is a bit of a window pane in here. Like, there are separate pieces of glass. Now, close up like that, obviously, it doesn't look wonderful at all. But you do get a reflective sense. Like, you can see the reflection although a bit muted, you can see the reflection on that particular texture. But from a distance, they actually look pretty pretty much like glass. And they have another benefit, too, where you can go as far away as you want and they don't disappear. Now, if you notice with, um, let me find a ship that has fancy glass in it, like the glass over here, right? Looks great close up. I love this glass. But once you get... A certain distance like about and it's not even that far away is the game to optimize performance removes the glass to, is it gone I don't know it's hard to tell sometimes but um, sometimes you can see it where it just uh, here maybe I can oh maybe they fix that yeah in the past it was like the uh, the glass would just disappear and it looked really, really bad from a distance. So maybe, maybe that is just plain and simply fixed, and they have um, level of detail models in there. You can obviously see the um, <coughs> excuse me, deco items inside of here. 
disappearing once I get a certain distance away. But the glass looks like it's doing a whole lot better job now. All right, well, I guess that's a non-issue. That, that's cool. I'm glad to see that uh, fixed. It was uh, really annoying when you have a ship and you're not even that far away and you look at it, it looks like you got a big hole in the side of your ship when really it just stopped drawing the glass to increase uh, performance um, until you got close. All right, well, anyway, that's that's kind of what this challenge is about. I am uh, I kind of wanted to actually make an interior of this building, and I wanted to call it Club Anvil with the big A on the side um, and just have it some kind of, like, fancy club bar building thing of some origin just to add to the city. Who knows? Might even make more things for it. It's kind of fun, actually, making, like, little tile pieces. Um... You could go pretty tall, I would imagine, with this, too. Um, I, I didn't want to go too tall because, because right now I thought it was set as, as a size class 1 limit. So if I went too big, um, I would have easily blown that. And if you use a lot of fancy blocks, too, a lot of curvy blocks with higher polygons, your size class will go through the roof really quick. Kind of uh, why I wanted to use all these uh, fairly low polygon uh, wedge blocks to make this shape. Um, so I didn't um, ramp up the size class too quickly. Like if you try to make a building bigger like this one, this thing is, well, yeah, I guess size class six. So much, much larger considering it's total Minecraft on the inside. And uh, yeah, uh, building the exterior of a building like this is uh, can be kind of quick, especially uh, parts of this were copied and pasted, like the front and the back are the same. and. Um, some of these things were copied and pasted around, so it didn't take a huge long time to make the building. But if I was going to do the interior on it, it'd probably take 15 times longer to make a building like that. It would actually take a long time to make a interior space like that. Well, all right. Anyway, you all have yourselves a good day. I will talk to you later.